vague here, but if if I have spent yeah x million of dollars figuring out gestures that are easiest for people to use and I've done all sorts of usability studies and I've had all sorts of of research on it and so I have figured out that you know three fingers swipe down does this and four swinger fingers swirled in a counterclockwise direction does something else and you know, whatever whatever these these swiping gestures are I have spent you know, two years and twenty million dollars or more do you think this number is true do you think Excuse this me? number? I, I'll tell you that these numbers that they give you, they are usually pretty much like the so-called piracy figures. The companies, and, and in, also in the case of Microsoft, and I've seen very good articles written about it. When they speak of Microsoft Research, mention to you the cost that they had in development. That's the actual writing of code usually. Uh, they don't actually take two years to do studies before they implement those things. And many of the developers, if you look very closely inside the companies, outside the whole PR cloud, uh, they will implement those things and work with them on the fly. So things like the shortcuts and the swipe gestures, whatever, they already had some things like this before. So Apple wasn't the first to do these things. Uh, in fact, touchscreens have been around since the 80s. Right. Uh, so, so it wasn't quite the first time a person was trying to do these things. And they had to like select the key, the keys and uh, shortcuts and things. I think it was almost done at the spot. Now, I'm not sure what exactly they patented. and Maybe it's to do to do with the way they write the code to interpret the strokes and things. But even this, I, I, it, it, it was implemented before, and that's the, the issue I have. To talk about PR and R&D and give numbers like $20 million here and there, you have to very be very specific and show me where the money went. Because I believe, and I just encourage skepticism, is check if, the, if it's actually true that this money was spent on the so-called research. Uh, I, I found in most cases it's, it's just not true. It's more like PR and trying to get the patents than to prevent the competition. I, I got the impression from how what Michael was saying that this this was just an example of it wasn't making a specific point about a, yes. a certain innovation. I think he was he was he was generalising. Correct me if I'm wrong, Michael. But you were you were just generalising the ethos that if somebody spent a lot of money on uh, on an idea or an innovation in inverted commas, then shouldn't they be allowed to protect that innovation? Um, that's what exactly. I think. Exactly. Yeah. If I if I put a lot of work into, it, I make um, I make screencast videos for training, and there are things that I do that are, are rather different than what yeah you know, some of the competition does. Um, I won't even mention names, but there's some big competition in the screencasting world, and I do things a little different that I think works better for my students. Now I've spent a few years working with students. I don't have official research, but I've spent years of time working with students, getting student feedback to figure out the best ways of doing this. Now, I have to say, if I started selling this and becoming big, I sell it pretty much, yeah. If I have a run of 200, it's a lot. So if someone takes my ideas, it's not a big idea, frankly, or a big deal. But if I had, if I was a big company selling this and somebody came and copied my almost exact style of video, well, they haven't done the work to to earn that, if you will. On the other side, you're going to get ideas from what you see. Do you get there's, inspired there's a balance here. when you do the video? Do you think that watching TV or listening to the radio actually inspires the way you speak and the way you present things? Oh, of, of course, I'm inspired so, by other uh, things. And people why, would be inspired by me. Right. So, so exactly. So you basically take but you don't want people to take from you. And this is one not of the issues we have in search, I'll tell you. And I use a lot of code from other people legally. Okay. Basically, there is the consensus that if basically you are allowed to take the ideas of other people to extend them and to work on them, then you, it would be kind of you to basically allow other people to do that as well. And this is how progress is basically being made. And many of the companies work in this way. And then there is the issue of implementation. I mean, once you make the video... That's protected by copyrights, and that's acceptable. So I'm not against copyrights or anything like that. For, firstly, let me let Michael respond because um, Roy, uh, Roy made a comment. I think Michael wanted to come in there with an answer. Um, it, so yes, I learn from what I see in other people, and as I see other, you know, in this case, screencasts, I'm learning some of the techniques and some of the skills they're doing. But what I don't do is look at a yeah, company X one and say, oh my goodness, what they're doing is um, you know, when they zoom in on, a, on this section, they have a specific way of doing it. So that's the way I'm going to do it because that works well. To me, that would be completely unacceptable. Now, I might say, wow, they're zooming in and this other company is zooming in and, I, yeah, and this is sort of becoming 
Yeah, even just if I see one yeah. company that works well, how can I learn from that to do it, to implement something that would get yeah. the same effect it's for my students? There is a simultaneous so-called innovation, so it's very likely another person somewhere on YouTube uh, is doing this, the same things you do without ever actually seeing your videos, uh, unless you're doing something extremely complex. And in the case of patents, we usually try to separate things that are very general patents supplying to like a whole broad family of things and things that are very specific and complex like building an MRI machine which is like loads of boxes there is almost no way of a person doing the exact same thing independently uh, but yeah. I mean, yeah with with my screencasting I mean you're there's I'm not doing something so amazingly innovative that I think I you know the, I think I agree with you on here. With this, it's not amazingly innovative enough where somebody could look at that, get ideas where I could specifically say, well, you've taken it from me and I'm going to sue you. But if we go back to the gestures, say, and again, I'm, this is top of my head, but if I have a whole set of gestures of, of how things work, and Apple has built a whole language of gestures, as far as I know, more complete and more more tied to their system than anybody else. They've, they've spent a lot on this. If Android devices well, come... Really easy to and, make. In 2003, I created gestures for my Linux environment in SUSE, SUSE 8.1. Uh, so I had a company called, uh, a program called Wave running in the background, and I could use strokes on the mouse to make on the screen strokes, like drawing something, and then run applications based on that. So it isn't a very new idea. The whole yeah. issue of gestures, it's a very, very old idea. You're, you're missing... You basically assign the, the, the characters and saying, well, you have to do this and this and that to unlock the phone. I'm not sure, if, you know, just the assignment of keys and shortcuts should be like, you know, it's 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 causing a lot of trouble for the users because they sometimes want some consistency, like, you know, control Q will usually be quick. Now, do you want to allow people to have a monopoly on that so other people will have to find something else to do? I don't, I, I just don't think that's good for the users in general. But you're, I think you're you're missing a little bit of what I'm saying. I'm not saying gestures in general. I'm saying a language of gesturing. So you're looking at the words and saying, well, I've wrote, written the word um, to, and I've written the word be, and I've written the word not. So you know, I own, the, you know, those words aren't owned, but you know, if Shakespeare was still around and wrote to be or not to be, that is his, you know, one of his trademark phrases. Other people can't just take the language that he's using. Oh, they actually, use Shakespeare the was an example of somebody who just took all loads of people's work and combined it into one work. It's a very well-known fallacy, just like there is the one about Edison being an inventor, when in fact he just took other people's ideas, expanded the ideas slightly, very slightly, and then it's kind of st stole, and I put in quotes, stole their ideas and got a patent on it. Uh, in the case of Shakespeare, that's an example of somebody who just took loads of existing works, combined it all into one, and then people give it credit like he actually wrote the art, the, the works, when in fact lots of these works were just uh, accumulations or remixes of existing works that were out there. But he he still put, I mean, I, I don't know, maybe he plagiarized, and at the time plagiarism was not seen as it is now, but if you know, somebody, so I'm reading the Fire and Ice series, I just got the newest book. If I were to get that book, it's, you know, it's 900 plus pages. If I were to get that book and change names of characters and change names of places and redescribe a couple of characters, I can't publish that. Yeah, that's, that's not I fair can't. use. It's not fair use. It's exactly. And I yeah, think I agree with you. Yeah. And so I, I, there's a large, large gray area now. So when it's a very you, complex. What you're describing is 900 pages of work. It's more like code. It's a bit more like. Google trying to take the whole code of the whole gesture module from Apple and trying to change the name of variables or something. The, that, that's what you're describing now, and that's copyrights. So but the, that, but the, the, Apple is not publishing the code to describe to how they get to the language. Uh, what they have is the language of gestures. Think well, so, of the so gestures itself as the book. Right, so you, what you, you, you're saying is Apple has got a certain plot and Android or Google is trying to have a something along the same vein, uh, just as sometimes in games, like in third-person shooters or in loads of that loads of types of films, are actually can fall into like 20 categories of, of you know the horror films, the drama, the the drama, the uh, comedy, and in these you have certain stories lines that you can classify just about any movie into about 20 categories of of how the film is supposed to proceed, and nobody is actually going going after you and saying oh well you made this uh, film Avatar, and that's actually like Dancing with Wolves combined with right. something else. Uh, this is this is just the way it works, and Hollywood is 
fill with these examples, even the scenes themselves, you can watch the, the, the scenes. It's just replications of things that are old. If you, if you manage to find right sequences, you can show that what they do is they copy successful ideas from the past in many of the scenes.